Welcome back to MDL Crochet. The stitch we're going to learn today is the double extended purl. It creates a really nice meshy fabric. It is very simple to do. If you know how to do the purl stitch and you know how to chain one, that's pretty much what it is. I did this in a four weight yarn with a 6.5 millimeter hook. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, so for this stitch, it's a little bit different. You know how we have the front and the back post of a stitch. Here's the back post, there's the front post. Now, of course, we don't ever do anything in this side stitch right here. So how we're going to do this, you're going to yarn, put your yarn up in front, just like you would do for a purl. Pinch it down a little bit, and you're going to go through this gap and you're going to pull up both of these front and back posts and then you're going to come out the other side of the gap so you'll be coming out of this gap right here so in this gap go into this gap pull up your front and back post and you're coming out of this gap just like this so we're going to yarn over go into that gap and pull up those front and back posts like we just did drop your yarn like you would for a purl yarn over pull it up now we're not done just yet this is how we make it extend make it extended you chain one so yarn in front of go through the gap pull it up your front and your back post drop your yarn yarn over pull that loop up chain one yarn in front of go into the gap pulling up your front and back post drop your yarn Yarn over, pull up your loop, and then you chain one. This is the double, this is the extended double purl. This is the double extended purl. So one more, just go in front, put your yarn in front of your needle. Go into that, the gap as you would for a full stitch. Angle yourself so you're getting both of those bars and then coming out the other side. Drop your yarn, yarn over, pull your yarn through, and then just chain one. And that is the stitch. It's very simple. It's very easy. However, it adds a good amount of texture. And you have to do the chain one after you pull up. So let's continue doing this. So put your yarn in front of, go into the gap, pull up your front and back bar, and then you're going to drop your yarn, yarn over, and pull up a loop, and then chain one. So yarn over, go through the gap, Pulling up both bars, you drop your yarn, yarn over, pull up your loop, chain one. Yarn in front of your needle, go through the gap, take your yarn, drop it behind your needle, yarn over, pull it through, chain one. Yarn in front of your needle, go through the gap. Drop your yarn, yarn over, go through the loop, yarn over and chain one. Yarn in front of your needle, go through the gap, pulling up both front and back posts. Drop your yarn, go behind your needle, and then pull up, yarn over, and then pull up your loop, and then chain one. Yarn in front of your needle, go through the gaps, pulling up front and back post, drop your yarn, yarn over, pull up your loop, chain one. And this is the entire stitch. It is very simple. It's one of the easiest, easier stitches out there because you, all you're really doing is doing a purl and then you're chaining one, but you're doing the purl 
because you're pulling up both your front and your back. So it's a double pearl. And it add, adds dimension to your project. And that is how you do that stitch. So yarn in front of, go into the gap, pulling up both front and back post, drop your yarn, go behind your needle, yarn over, pull up your loop, chain one. Yarn in front of, go into the gap, pulling up both front and back post, drop your yarn, go yarn over, pull up your loop, chain one, chain one. Yarn in front of your needle, go into the gap, pull up front and back loop, yarn over, pull up your loop, chain one. And that is the entire stitch, and it is a standard return pass. And you just go into the end stitch like we normally do, pull up your loop, you have chain one, and then yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two is your return pass. And I'm going to go ahead and finish the return pass and do a few more rows so you can see what this actually looks like to in a swatch. And I will see you all here in just a moment. All right, so to go ahead and close off this stitch, what we're going to do is we're going to do the actual stitch. So go ahead and yarn over, and then pull up the front and back bar, drop your yarn around, yarn over, and pull up your loop. And then when we got the loop up, now we're, spo we're supposed to do the chain one, but we're going to go ahead and pull through two. So again, yarn in front of your needle, pull up both the front and back loop, drop your yarn, yarn over, Pull through your needle, and now we'll go ahead and yarn over and pull through two. That is how we're going to close this off. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish it off, and we'll come back and we'll chit chat about the the stitch itself. I'll see y'all in just a moment. So we're at the end stitch, and you do the end stitch just like we always have. Just Go into the no our end stitch, pull up your loop, and cast it off. And that is how you close this stitch off. And let's take a look at it. Look at that. That stitch has a lot of give. And it has a lot vertical. And a decent amount horizontal. And it actually looks really airy. This is what the back looks like. You can see the ribbing on the back. It's actually kind of cool to do it on a, if you want to do it in reverse. But this would make a nice spring top or whatever. Anything airy that you want that's light. It's nice. It's I like it a lot. It's a, it's a really nice stitch that I've used quite a bit. But if you found this tutorial helpful it'd be greatly appreciated if you can give me a like and subscribe and leave me a comment I will chit chat with you and as always folks keep stitching